Namaste everyone, welcome to another episode of the Avocado Insider series. It's your host Harshad Godha. In this video, I have a new guest. His name is Eric Vogt and he's from University of California, Riverside. Uh, we will discuss how to breed new avocado varieties. Uh, now, breeding is different from propagation. Propagation is you multiply one particular variety and create multiple trees from this of the same variety using a budwood. But breeding is developing a new variety. So if you want a Haas-like variety, then how would you go about developing that variety? How would you have a new variety that has a parental lineage of Haas and some other uh, avocado tree that uh, has qualities you are looking for? So Eric will discuss all those questions. And uh, this is going to be a very long video. And I'm going to publish it in one go. Usually my videos are short, but this one's gonna be a long one because this one's more like a lecture rather than a series of questions that I asked him. He explains how to go about uh, developing a new variety. So stay tuned. Eric, can you introduce yourself to, our, uh, to my audience and uh, tell like your background in agriculture, avocados, and how, uh, what kind of research you're doing these days? Mm -hmm. um, uh, yes, my name is Eric Folks. I am a researcher at the University of California, Riverside. Uh, I work under Dr. Mary Lou Arpea. Um, I've been there since maybe about 1999, 2000, something like that. It's been a while. Yeah. Um, I started out working in her lab as just sort of an assistant, a research assistant, but uh, from around 2005, uh, my supervisor, my direct supervisor, David Stolomeyer, retired and he was the avocado breeder, so I took okay. over that role from him yeah. in 2005, and um, uh, I've been working there ever since. Uh, I recently actually went back to school after a several decade hiatus, so looking to finish my PhD um, on plant breeding and genetics and plant physiology, okay. uh, probably June of 2023 is the current. So from Currently. University of California, Riverside, or some... Yes, yeah. So I'm working and I'm... Okay. Um, at the same time. At the nice. nice. Now, my main uh, question for the uh, interview was about plant breeding, of the variety breeding. So if me or any of my viewers want to breed a new variety of uh, that has a parental line of Haas, and they want to create a Haas-like variety, mm -hmm. how would they go about doing it? Okay. That's actually a really good question. And it's one that I'm, I'm very interested in. Um, you know, from my perspective, uh, uh, Hass is, is a California variety, you know, it, it arose in California. Um, and therefore it does well in climates like California, which is a Mediterranean climate. Um, and that is a very different climate than the origin generally speaking, of avocados, which is Mexico and Central America. Some of the highland areas there are close to a California climate, but there's a lot of areas that are more tropical. And so there, there are large portions of, you know, the avocado genetic background that are better adapted to places like India, Colombia, um, you know, more tropical locations than California germplasm necessarily is. Yeah. So, um, you know, having said that, I mean, the first thing that somebody I think needs to do in their region is to understand what is already there and what is doing well in that region. Okay. So, you know, if you are in India or wherever, um, I know Colombia is already doing this, you know, basically, you know, they have started to look at their own varieties that do well. Okay. They already have a good handle on those and they're starting to investigate them. So if you were to want to breed avocados in India, you should look to what already is established there and does well, you know, productivity, uh, eating quality, uh, resistance to the temperature conditions diseases or whatever um and so that's the sort of first step uh is being aware of what germplasm you're working with what genetic resources you have 
the next step, which is probably already happening accidentally, is that, you know, varieties like Hass and Gem and these California, these Mediterranean varieties that are already, they have a global market for a type of fruit. Those are already making their way into these tropical countries, like Colombia, for example, and, and India as well. And so you would want to set up, I mean, on a basic level, um, a seed production block or an idea or a concept of where you're going to get your seeds to plant out to trial, your, okay. your progeny that you're looking at, your, your breeding selections. So, you know, I mentioned that avocado is very difficult to intentionally cross. So, you know, there's different ways that you could set that up. You could, um, you could set up isolation blocks uh, if you wanted to do intentional crosses. So that would be where you just have a couple varieties in a small cluster far away from any other avocados okay. and, you know, provide bees or whatever. So you know that the pollen in there is going to go back and forth yep. and stay in there. And the seed you get from that block, you know, is going to be likely crossed between the two or self. Um, the other option you have is to set up a sort of seed block uh, where trees will be open pollinated. You won't necessarily know the pollen source, but the idea is you have a large block, maybe a hectare or so, depending on how much seed you want to generate, with a lot of different varieties, and they all have traits that are valuable. Not necessarily the same traits, you know. Um, some will have a very good fruit. Maybe there is a, you know, variety that has a small tree and you're interested in smaller trees for high density or, you know, it has something else. So you're going to have all these different trees and different traits in this big block. And you're then assuming that they're crossing roughly, you know, randomly and somewhat equally or whatever. And the seed you take out of that block should have good genetic traits from one or more parents. Okay. And so that's where you're going to get your seed to start yeah. with. You know, you have to basically select your parents yeah. and then set them up in a way that they're able to cross and then you're going to get your seed. Okay. Now, when we were running at full speed at UC Riverside, um, we would plant out around a thousand seedlings every year. Uh, just because the percentage is fairly low, you know, out of those thousand seedlings, you're looking at probably one to 2% positive selection. That's based on fruit traits. Um, you know, because at that initial selection point, you don't really have the time to sort of like consider other things like A and B flower type or tree architecture, or even necessarily you won't know how consistent the yield is from year to year because this is going to be their first or second fruit and you're just going to decide that it tastes good. So that's your initial selection and it's a very low percentage. So you need to plant generally a lot of seed to get, you know, better odds of getting something out of there. Wait, um, so I have a question. First, I take a parent bug. Right? Let's say so, sorry, it's kind, of, it's kind of quiet. Hello, can you hear me? Oh, uh, yeah. Okay, so first I take a parent block where I have uh, the parental lines uh, or the varieties that I want the traits of and then I plant them, then they grow up and then I harvest the fruit, I take the seed out. Then I reap, uh, then I use those seeds and then plant it in a, another block, is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Yeah, and so that, that other plot, sorry, I just turned my phone off so it doesn't ring. Yeah, and so then you plant them out in another plot and you have to let them grow for a while until okay. they have their own fruit for you to evaluate. Right, 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 right. Um, and that generally takes, in California, that takes five to six years before you're going to start, you're going to get the majority of those thousand or so seedlings yeah. to have fruit okay. and to make the decision on whether to keep them or not. So, I mean, that's the thing, too. Uh, for us, because land is at a premium, 
Um, you plant them very close. We would plant them at about a meter and a half, very close. You could probably go a meter. Five foot spacing was was we used the the imperial system. So um, instead of metric, but it's around one one and a half meter spacing. Um, in rows, and you know the idea is that um, because you're expecting a low percentage, and because the cost of land and time and labor is so important yeah. that you give them roughly five to six years to produce, or basically, if you've evaluated say eighty percent of the field, you make your selections at that point and then clear it and plant again. Just it depends. I mean, this is in our case in California, land is expensive, you know, and so, you know, you can't let them sit too long. I mean, it, it's this balance. You want them to grow long enough that they can have fruit, but at the same time, you don't want to wait until the very last tree in that row or that yeah. field has borne fruit and been evaluated. You just have to assume at a certain point, okay it's not worth keeping these trees around for another two years or three years or whatever. I've got what I needed out of it. Let's start again and plant another thousand seedlings here, you know? So it's this sort of recycling of the field and space. So once you've gotten your selections out of that field, you know, that's sort of your initial selection yeah. based on your fruit quality or whatever, you're going to have somebody basically graft them and create a small, separate field yeah. or you can further evaluate them you know maybe you're going to make five to six copies of each one that's of interest and you know you're going to keep watching those and, and this is where you can make other sort of selections you'll have a better idea if they're consistent from year to year if the um if the, the fruit season is later or earlier, you'll have a better idea of that. You'll also, because the trees aren't planted so closely yeah. in this location and you're letting them grow a little bit longer, a little bit larger, you'll have a better understanding of what the tree is going to look like, whether it's spreading or narrow or something like that. And also flower type, whether it's an A or B flower type, yeah. this is something in California that's more extreme avocado climates that's important. Um, Black skin or green skin? Yes, yes. Well, I mean, you're going to know that the first selection. So your, 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 your initial selection is based on fruit quality. You should know at that point if it's going to be black skin or green skin because you have to pick it and, and let it get soft. Um, but you're right. Sometimes, I mean, there is a little bit of play or give in some varieties, we have one variety that, you know, depending on how you soften it, like at what temperatures, it can be almost kind of a little bit of a black skin, but it's not really, it's dark green skin. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, you know, you're gonna have more fruit at that point in that second level yeah. where you can start to look at those kind of things. Like maybe, you know, well, I, I know that if, uh, if we pick it at this month, it is a blacker skin than if we pick it at that month. Or you could start to do some, you know, storage trials on it, post-harvest handling. Like, okay, well, I have, I've got five to six trees. Maybe I've got, you know, several hundred pieces of fruit every year. Uh, you know, I can, you can try refrigerating, storing X percentage of them for so many weeks and see how that you can start to do those kind of things because you have more, um, you have more trees and, and you, you know, you're, you're paying attention to them throughout the year. Yeah. And um, so that's sort of the second phase tier two. And after that, like not all of those make it again, because I mean, maybe they were initially a really good tasting fruit. Uh, they taste excellent uh peel well or whatever all these other traits you're looking at but they don't have a consistent yield or um something else goes wrong like maybe you know they're i don't know the, the tree is too large or there's some kind of issue that comes up but the ones that make it out of there then you're going to plant those into a you know a sort of final tier tier three yeah 
And those uh, you're going to, this is, this is where you, because you have less varieties, you can plant them in more locations. And you want to do that so that you understand uh, the environmental effects. Because um, you know, up until this point, you're basically working in one area. Even if your initial seeds that you plant out and the second phase are in a different location, it's still one location. So you really only understand the environment how it affects all of them at that location. Yeah. But if you can plant them into more than one environment, you really get a better idea of how they're going to perform in different environments. In California, we have a lot of different microclimates. You know, in Irvine, where most of our material is, it's a sort of cool coastal Mediterranean climate. Where I work and live in Riverside, uh, it's a little hotter, it's more inland. But then we have a site also up in the Central Valley that is it's very different, it's very extreme, um, much more humid and hotter in the summer and colder in the winter. And the fruit and the trees behave very differently in those different climates. So you want that last sort of phase, that third phase, you want to see if you can get multiple growing regions to make sure that you know this is a variety um, that performs well in all of them. Either that or you know, well, okay, this is better in high altitude uh, cooler climate. So I'm going to focus, you know, if I tell a grower to select this variety, they better have a high altitude or vice versa. This performs better in a high rainfall tropical environment. You know, uh, it really depends, you know, in your case in India, what kind of environment you're working with. But you want to get that third phase into at least a couple of those, ideally as many as you can, to understand better the environmental effects in these different varieties. And in that trial as well, you plant um, a sort of control, which for us is Hass, or it could be a gem, you know, something that's an industry standard in your area yeah. um, or globally. So, I mean, if you were looking to produce something to compete on the global market, yeah. you'd probably plant Hass as a control, but it might be something else. Maybe if you're working for the local market, maybe there's a local fruit that's so those are decisions you have to make yourselves, but yeah. ideally you plant some sort of a control so that you understand how it performs your varieties, how they perform yeah. versus the standard, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, uh, it's a long process. This is decades. Yeah. yeah I... Makes sense. All right. That's all the questions I had. Hope you found this video interesting and insightful. Thank you for watching. I'm publishing regular content these days, so I really hope if you can subscribe to my channel, that would keep me motivated to publish more content. Bye bye.